It's been said that every quilt tells a story, and it's so true. But I also believe every quilter has a story to tell. I wanted to hear about the people behind these wonderful quilts and thought you'd enjoy hearing about their lives also. Welcome to A Quilter's Life. How many times do we say the details make the difference? Dana Mastrojanakis enjoys focusing her attention on the details to make beautiful quilts. I enjoyed visiting with this old-fashioned country girl to hear how relentless she is when it comes to her quilting. Make sure to take a look at her quilts on my website, aquilterslife.com. It's great to have you with me today, Dana. Well, thank you. I appreciate you wanting to do an interview with me. This is unusual for me. I'm not used to people asking me lots of questions about myself, so this will be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, let's start with, tell me where you were born and raised. I was actually born in a suburb of Columbus, Reynoldsburg. Where I grew up, though, and what I consider my kind of formative years, you know, like those critical like youth years, was a little community out in the middle of nowhere called Hideaway Hills. The closest town to it is Bremen, Ohio. This was probably the best environment I can imagine for me personally. It's interesting when I think back what I was like before we moved out there. I was very, very shy, kind of backward. There wasn't a lot of kids in my neighborhood that were my age, so I played by myself a lot or whatever. And I don't know what happened when we moved out in the country, but I just kind of like blossomed. And I loved everything about where we live. It was country, but there were also lots of woods and creeks to explore. And we had a pond where we could go fishing and ice skating. And we had a huge tree in our backyard. So I was constantly climbing that tree and just, there was just a lot of room for imagination. I have two older brothers, but they didn't want to play with me. So I was still like by myself a lot, but I was never lonely. Like when I was three, four, five years old, this is going to sound probably kind of goofy, but it's like, nature was my friend. I used my imagination a lot. It was just a great place to grow up. And it was kind of cool because I went to a school. It was a lot of farmers, a lot of country. And so all my friends lived on farms or kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So we were outside all the time. Like we would spend the night at each other's houses. We would use our imaginations a lot, a lot more than I think a lot of kids get to do nowadays. Yeah. So yeah, it was just a great place to grow up. So it was, it was neat. Besides all those wonderful experiences in growing up, was there a special childhood memory you have? The thing I think about most about growing up, the house we were in was a really old house. It used to be a log cabin and then somebody along the line had built onto it. I can just remember we had a fireplace So I remember all of us in the living room sitting around the fireplace and watching TV together and just, I don't know, I, when I would play, I would bring my toys downstairs and, you know, my parents would watch TV and we were just kind of like all together. I like that kind of sense of, you know, you do everything as a family, watch TV together, you play games together. I can remember, this is going to sound kind of funny, but in the winter time, it, it never failed. Every winter, we would lose our power and be snowed in for like a week. And I used to think that was the most fun. I was like, oh, we get to play a little house on the prairie. You know, <laughs> we would all sleep and we would close off the rest of the house with curtains or whatever in the doorway to keep the heat in one room. And we would have our fire. And so it was just kind of neat. I'm kind of like a old fashioned type girl. So yeah. to me, that's a lot of fun. I'm picturing that in that I grew up out in California. So moving Uh to Ohio, I always wished it would snow so bad that that would happen, that we wouldn't be able to go out for a week and have our family all right here. Yeah, I used to love that because where I was, it was very rural. And so we were constantly having snow days. And that was the best because me and my brother, the one that's closer in age to me, would go out and we would go exploring in the snow and we would be out for hours just playing and 
you know, tromping around. It was just so much fun. That area of Ohio doesn't have too many hills, so you didn't get the sled probably very much. Right. We had one good hill at the Hideaway Hills was considered like a resort community, which I never thought about it as that when I was younger. But we didn't have a big hill where we lived, but up the road where the main lodge was, there was a huge hill. And so a few winters we did go up there and sled down the big hill. But yeah, so that was fun. That's neat. Yeah. It was just a good, good time growing up. Yeah. Well, tell me about your employment. The degree that I got in college was nursing, but I wasn't a nurse for very long, maybe five years. It didn't take me long to realize that that just wasn't the career for me. It's a great career. But I think to be a nurse, you have to have a level of confidence and self-assurance. And, you know, I just didn't have that at the time. So I worked as a nurse for about five years and then I had my first child. So I stopped working. But off and on for the last 18 years, I've done just different various jobs. Like I was a package handler for FedEx. And for almost two years, I worked at an auto parts factory, which I loved. I was on an assembly line and I ended up running some of the machines. And, you know, I had people that were under me that I would supervise. And that was just so much fun. It was just a great place to work. It sounds Um, like fun. Yeah, it was. It really was. I made a lot of good friends there. And the job I've had most recently was for caterer. And, of course, we did weddings and parties and, and things like that. Also, the catering company had contracts with several charter schools. And so I worked as a lunch server for a few different elementary and high schools. And that was a lot of fun because the kids are just, you know, just a hoop. The high school kids were a lot of fun to watch. So you would interact with them and you get to have your favorites, you know, your kids that would come by every day and you would, I don't know, it was just, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I've done most recently. I'll probably have to go back to work soon just because we have some expenses coming up. I was just in Hobby Lobby today. I was like, hmm, maybe I could go you know, get a job at Hobby Lobby because not only would I be working and it would be an environment that, you know, I know the store like the back of my hand, but you get to interact with people and you get to see what kind of things they're buying and you can kind of make small talk. Oh, what are you making out of this? That would be kind of fun. So I yeah. might end up going someplace like that. That would be cool. So, yeah. Back when I was first starting college, I did work for a fabric store and it was a lot of fun. Cut out the different fabrics and making small talk with the customers. That was a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, I'm kind of a hodgepodge of <laughs> different <laughs> employment experiences. If I had to do it all over, I know home economics isn't taught as much in high schools now, but I probably would have done really well as a teacher. Mm. But because that's something I've enjoyed. So yeah. So that's pretty much my employment history. Yeah. Where do you live now and how did you get here from where you were born and raised? Right now I live in Grove City, which is a suburb southwest of Columbus. And this is where my husband was born and raised. And even though we lived in a couple other towns, but we ended up back here, several of his family members still live here and old friends that still live here. And it's close enough to my parents. You know, I can drive to see them when I want to. It's a nice kind of mid-sized city or town. Still kind of has that small town feel with some of the things that they do, like the annual festivals and things like that that they do that kind of kind of gives you that small town feel. But it's big enough to where there is a lot to offer, lots of shopping. It's close to Columbus. There's a lot to do. So I still would eventually, if possible, like to end up kind of back out in the country somewhere. But for now, Grove City will do. (laughs) (laughs) So is Um, that where you raised your kids or did you move back there? Yes. Okay. Yes, we moved here. My son was about a year and a half old. So he has lived here all his life. About 18 years we've lived here. 
hearing me say that, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been 18 years. (laughs) So, but but yeah, it's a nice place to live. Well, besides quilting, what other crafts do you do or have you done? I have done a lot of different types of crafts. I'm a little bit ADHD, I guess, because, you know, I'll see something, I'm like, oh, I want to try that, or just kind of impulsive. So I've dabbled in a lot of different things. Like I've done some knitting. I've knitted mostly like hats and I've knitted some stuffed animals. Those are kind of fun to do. I've crocheted some small blankets. I used to do scrapbooking. And actually, I have used my scrapbook paper to do what I call paper quilting, which I make a quilt block out of scrapbook paper pieces and they turn out really nice and I frame them I've given them as gifts like to my kids teachers you know just something small to hang on the wall in a bathroom or something like that they turn out really pretty how do you connect them together I take one piece of scrapbook paper like a 12 by 12 and that will be my foundation and then I'll cut out the pieces of whatever design I'm making like if it's a Ohio star or whatever and I will tack them down onto that foundation with either some scrapbook glue or the uh, double-sided tape. Sometimes with the tape, if one is just a little bit crooked, you can kind of pick it up and move it around. It seems to work really well. They turn out, yeah, they turn out really nice because, you know, they make all kinds of um, scrapbook paper, different designs and prints and every color you can imagine. So the paper quilts are a lot of fun to do. Yeah, that that sounds Um, fun. Yeah. And they go together quick, a lot quicker than an actual quilt. (laughs) So you kind of get that satisfaction of making a quilt without the intensity of it. Oh, I've made doll clothes. I actually have my own American Girl doll that looks like Anne of Green Gables and has a pretty extensive wardrobe (laughs) with her face where I was making a lot of clothes. So that's a lot of fun. Let's see. I have a nice set of colored pencils and some of the more adult type coloring books, you know, with the intricate designs. So I've done a little bit of that. And I've actually went through a phase a few years ago where I would trace some of those designs onto shrinky dink plastic. And then I would color them in either with colored pencils or with markers. And I made Christmas ornaments. Oh, what is they cool shrink up. Yeah, they shrink up a really nice size and the lights from the tree Especially if you use marker, it will shine through them, kind of like an opaque, but still the light can get through. They look really nice, like stained glass. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a fun hobby too. Oh, and I went through a phase where I would go to the thrift store and find vases that were unique shapes, and I would paint them to look like people. And so when you add the flowers to the vase, that becomes the hair. Those were kind of cute. It's like a little person and their hair is kind of sticking out every which way. (laughs) So that was kind of fun. That's probably enough crafting. I'm sure there's other things, but. That's um, a lot of crafts. Yeah. Like I said, I kind of get an idea in my head and I jump into it and do that for a while. And then I get tired of it and I move on to something else. So, but quilting has always been the one that I've always come back to. Yeah. With all those crafts, are there any hobbies you do? The only other real hobby I have, I guess you could consider reading a hobby. I do love to read, and I've actually become very fond of audiobooks because I can listen to a story while I'm doing something else, whether it's cooking or housework or sitting at my machine and quilting. It's like I get the satisfaction of hearing the story, but I'm also busy at the same time. Yeah. As you can tell, I like to be kept busy. I think I have some (laughs) nervous energy (laughs) that I need to do something with. I don't really have any other hobbies that I can think of. Mm -hmm. I I stay pretty busy just with my sewing and quilting. Who introduced you to quilting? That's kind of a funny story. Not funny, but just kind of odd. I was in nursing school. So I was probably about maybe 20 or 21 years old. And by that age, I had been sewing for a long time. I've been sewing since I was probably eight years old. And I had always made dresses for myself or occasionally a stuffed animal or a doll or something like that. 
and never even had a thought of making a quilt. And I was at school one evening and I was with a friend and we were in another friend's dorm room and she was working on a quilt. And I was so struck by that. I had never known a person my age really who even sewed, let alone to make a quilt. And I thought that was so cool that she was making something like that. And so me being me, I was like, I want to make a quilt. (laughs) And so I didn't bother to learn about how you make a quilt or steps involved. I was just like, I'm going to make a quilt. And so the next time I went home, I measured my bed and I kind of drew up a layout of what I wanted my quilt to look like. It was just a bunch of squares sewn together. So it wasn't (laughs) anything, you know, so it was a simple design, but then I started gathering scraps and cutting out these little, I think they were maybe four inch by four inch squares. I cut them out with a template that I made from cardboard. So I did this all with scissors and this was for a full size bed. So it wasn't a a little thing. It was like a big, but you know, that's me just kind of dive in. (laughs) So I cut out all these little scraps and I have no idea what possessed me to do this, but I pieced the whole thing by hand. I didn't use my machine. I guess maybe I thought it would be more authentic or something, but that took a lot of time. If you can imagine four inch squares made into a full size bed (laughs) quilt, doing it all by hand. It took me a while also because I was in nursing school. So it took me a couple of years to complete, but I finally got it done and I've been kind of hooked on quilting ever since. Since then, I've read some books and articles and gathered tips on how to do this and that better. But I'm pretty much, I guess you could say, self-taught, as in nobody like in person instructed me or gave me any lessons or anything. Based on what I know just from either personal experience, you know, what to do and what not to do or things that I've read, that's how I've pretty much learned. Yeah. So I've made a lot of quilts over the last, let's see, like I said, I was probably By the time it was finished, I was probably 22 or 23 years old. So that was about 25 years ago. Yeah. So I've been making quilts for a long time. To me, it seems like a long time anyway. (laughs) (laughs) If I'm calculating right, that's about half your life or more. Yeah. Which is pretty neat. Yeah. Describe your favorite quilt pattern or a quilt you have made. I don't know that I have a favorite pattern that I like, but probably my favorite quilt that I have made is probably one that I ended up being like the most proud of. It was a baby quilt. I think it was maybe like a square yard, like by the time it was finished. And it was a very simple design. It started out with a square in the center that was probably maybe like a 10 inch square. And then around that center square were probably six or seven borders of different widths. And the fabrics that I picked out for the different borders, several of them, I didn't realize at the time, I was just looking for colors that look good. I like to mix florals and dots and stripes and, you know, different things. So I happened to pick out fabrics that had like a definite design. Like one of them was a zigzag. One of them was stripes. So in order to make it look really nice, I mitered each of the corners of those borders so that the pattern would be one continuous pattern. It took me forever because I had to match up zigzags and I had to match up stripes and I matched up each stripe came together at exactly the same point. And one of the fabrics that I mitered, it had dots on it. And the way I cut the fabric, some of the dots were cut in half. So I had to find another piece of the fabric where the dot would match exactly in the center. And it was crazy. I don't know why I did it. (laughs) I mean, it sounds insane and it probably was, but that's just me. I like things that are tedious and need a lot of work. For some reason, that gives me some sort of satisfaction. I'm a little bit perfectionist, a little bit OCD, a little bit, you know, 
but that quilt looked really nice when it was done and I was so proud of it. Yeah. So and I, I still have a picture of it. I did sell it to, to someone. That was probably one that was my favorite to work on. That is so neat. Those details make the difference. They really do. I mean, nothing against somebody that would oh, right. go to all that right. detail, you know, because that takes extra time. But for me, I was like, oh, I got to do it right. You know, I don't take any <laughs> shortcuts. So <laughs> for the most part. So, yeah, it was neat to see how it turned out and that I was actually able to achieve what I was hoping to was kind of fun. Yeah. Do you tend to use certain colors or anything goes? I don't think I have a certain color palette that I stick with. I think I usually end up finding one fabric that really catches my eye. And then I'll build the rest of the colors and fabrics in the quilt around that one fabric. There's one quilt that I have. The design is very simple, but I found the focus fabric is what I call that main mm -hmm. fabric. So just look at that fabric. You would probably think that is the ugliest fabric I have ever seen. <laughs> but there were different colors in it that I was like, this would be really cool. And so I pulled out the other colors in that focus fabric and it turned out to look really cool so the way I like to do it when I find that focus fabric I'll find little details in that fabric like say there's just a hint of red and so I'll add a good amount of red that kind of matches and I just like to do that kind of bring out the things that aren't as noticeable in that main fabric yeah on to a favorite tool well, that has got to be, and this is just the simplest thing, but it's got to be my rotary cutter and my rulers because I have done a quilt without them. Now I can't imagine doing a quilt without the cutter. It just saves so much time. So that's got to be my favorite number one tool. Mm -hmm. And I have a blade sharpener for my rotary cutter. So I can save a little bit of money having to replace blades. Uh -huh. That's the one tool that I can't do without when I'm making a quilt. So you find the blade sharpener worth it? I think so. It didn't cost that much. It's probably not the best quality. It's actually got what seems to me to be like different grains of sandpaper. There's a mm -hmm. fine grain. And then on the other side, there's like an ultra fine grain. And you just kind of run the rotary cutter blade, you kind of twist it back and forth on this sandpaper and you do the fine first and then you do the ultra fine. I think it works. I mean, of course, I won't be able to have the same blade forever. I do eventually replace it. <laughs> but it allows me to keep one blade for several different quilts worth yeah. before I replace it. So I think that was worth it. And I'm the kind of person, it didn't cost much because I'm one that looks for sales and coupons and I very rarely ever pay full price for anything. <laughs> so that's the way you got to do it sometimes, especially if you are big into a hobby, you can sink a lot of money into it. So I Definitely. save wherever I can. Yeah. Yeah. So which part of the process is your favorite? I think probably my favorite part is the designing. I will draw it up and I have grid paper that I draw with, and I will figure out all of the dimensions, and I have calculations that I made for how much yardage I use. So I enjoy the whole drawing that up, and then I enjoy shopping for the fabrics. You know, once you have the design, you can shop. I mean, there have been times when I have spent a couple of hours looking at fabrics just to find just the right ones. After you get the fabrics cut out, I always lay everything out before I start sewing so that I know exactly what it's going to look like. That to me is just like playtime for my mind. You get to use your creativity and your imagination a little bit. I just love that part of it. But I also do love the piecing part because I'm very particular. I like to have my seams exact. You know, I don't rush through anything. So piecing is something that I can do like as I'm sitting and watching TV or sitting and listening to a book 
my hands are still busy, but my mind is still working. Those are the parts of making the quilt that I love the most, the design and then the piecing. So are you still piecing by hand then? No. (laughs) I think the only quilt that I did by hand was that very first one. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm never doing this again. So yeah, I use my machine. There is some handwork that I will do, like if I'm sewing, like when I was making the doll clothes, there were some parts that I would sit and do by hand. But with quilting, for the most part, I do everything with my machine. Up until a couple of years ago, I did all of my actual quilting by hand. Of course, that takes 10 times longer than if you quilt on a machine. So now I have a machine that can quilt. It is a quilt machine, but it's not a long arm where, you know, you can do the big, huge quilts. Mine just looks like a regular sewing machine, so I can't do very big projects with it. Probably the biggest thing I could do with my machine now is maybe a twin size. Even that might be pushing it a little bit. So no, I don't do the hand piecing anymore. (laughs) I just wondered because I thought you said you watched TV when you were doing it. I don't have a designated area in my house just for sewing. It's just kind of wherever I can find space because we live in a small house. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll set my machine up in a corner of the living room where I can see or just hear the TV. And so I can hear the program that's on. Oh, nice. Yeah. My fun question. What was your worst quilting experience? (laughs) I don't know that I've ever had like a bad experience with a quilt, but if I had to pick something, I would say it was that first quilt. because. Like I said before, I did it all by hand. I cut out the squares with scissors and looking back, I'm like, wow, that was really stupid. <laughs> <'Cause it> took, <laughs> even just cutting out the squares took a long, long time. But I guess I just thought at that time, I'll just figure it out as I go. And I didn't bother to learn about what you should do and not do. So it's funny. I still have my first quilt and I cringe when. People say, oh, that's so nice. I just say, yeah, but don't ever look at the back of it because that's where all my knots are. I didn't know (laughs) that you were supposed to pop the knots so that they are concealed underneath that back layer of fabric. So my first quilt, there's knots everywhere. So I keep that quilt as kind of a reminder of what not to do when I'm... (laughs) And I guess another part of that quilt that was kind of a negative thing was I didn't think about, because I didn't bother to find out about how to make a quilt. I didn't think about the fabrics that I chose. I just chose what I had in my scrap stash. And it turns out that some of the fabrics that I chose were cotton blend instead of 100% cotton. They were cotton and polyester. And when I ironed seams, it shrunk. So there are squares that are kind of warped a little bit because that blended fabric I've lived and learned. I do much better work now. (laughs) (laughs) It was worth it though, because sometimes that's how you do have to learn is kind of messing up a little bit here and there. I can't think of any other negative experience I've had with making a quilt. Mm -hmm. So. Why do you make quilts instead of doing a different craft or hobby? There's probably a couple reasons. Probably the biggest one is at heart, I think I'm kind of an old fashioned girl. And what's more old fashioned than a nice old quilt? I love the look and the feel of an old quilt. If you don't pre shrink the fabrics, then you make the quilt and you wash it, it gets that kind of crinkly feel to it. I love that. And I love the idea that a quilt is something that a person could pass down from one person to another in their family. And I guess part of me likes the idea that someday my great, great grandchild could be like, this was made by my great, great grandma. I think that's probably the biggest reason that I make quilts is nostalgia of it. It's not something that's that common. I kind of want to keep that art alive a little bit. 
I think another reason that I quilt is that it's a creative outlet, definitely, but it's also kind of therapeutic. In life, as a lot of people have, I've been thrown a few curveballs, and sometimes I swing and I hit it out of the park, and other times, probably more often than not, I just strike out and fail. And so I know that I sew well. I'm fairly good at picking out the you know, things that look pretty and making a pretty design. So I think in kind of a way, it's kind of helps my self-esteem. Because after you've been knocked down a few times, you kind of start to get discouraged, get depressed, start to think, I'm not good at this, or I've failed at this. But this is something that I know that I'm good at, and I see the accomplishment. It kind of builds up my self-esteem a little bit. I think probably most of it is the nostalgia of quilts, but then a good part of it is the kind of the therapy. (laughs) The the therapy I get from having accomplished some things. So that's mostly why. Uh Who do you usually make them for? Well, like somebody has actually asked me, could you make a baby quilt for this person? Or I made one for a couple for their wedding. The mother of the bride wanted a quilt. So there have been several times when I have actually worked with a person and kind of gotten the colors that they want and kind of the design that they have in mind. But mostly, I would say it's just me making what I like and then either giving it to someone or trying to sell it, which I haven't had that much success at, but maybe that will come someday. But for right now, I'm just kind of collecting a good stash of quilt tops. And as I have time and resources, I'll make those into quilts. And who knows, maybe one day I will either sell them or just give them away to a worthy cause. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with that. (laughs) <laughs> but I can't very well. I mean, I guess I could have like 40 quilts in my house, but who needs <laughs> you know, that many quilts sitting around? So I guess maybe I'm hoping that someday I will be able to sell yeah. some of the yeah. things that I make. Do you have a current project going on right now? Oh, I have probably 10 projects right now. <laughs> I'm one of those people that I will start on something and then something will distract me or I've reached a point like I have some squares that have been sewn together, but I need another piece of fabric to make them into a top. So while I'm waiting for that other piece of fabric, I'll sew something else together. So I have probably three or four different tops that are in the making and then two tops that are done that I want to make into quilts, one for my mom and one for my daughter. But Probably the next big project I'm going to start on here in the next couple of days, I'm going to make some pillows. I call them remembrance pillows. I've done these before where a family member has contacted me and they'll send me clothing of a loved one that has died and I'll make pillows out of it so they can remember like if grandpa has his favorite shirt or, Mm -hmm. you know, you can look at that pillow and say, oh, I remember when grandpa used to wear that shirt. Well, my cousin sent me, I think I counted 30 neckties. Her father-in-law had a pretty good necktie (laughs) collection. So she wanted some pillows made out of those. So I'm going to make five pillows out of these neckties. So that's for my cousin and her mother-in-law and a couple other family members so that they can remember her father-in-law. Cool. So yeah, that'll be a fun project that I'll, I'll be getting started on that soon. Now, we talked a bit about your sewing area being different areas in your home. Mm -hmm, Right. (laughs) Is there anything else you want to tell me about your sewing area? Not really. Just that it would be nice someday to have an actual room designated just for storing my fabrics. And my husband actually bought me, it's called a quilt wall. It's a six foot by six foot piece of felted fabric where you can arrange quilt pieces on your wall 
So you don't have to be down on the floor laying out pieces and you can stand up and be piecing. You can move things around. So I would love to be able to have a nice big wall in a room someday where I can arrange all those things, set up my machine. Because right now my machine just kind of goes wherever there's room. Like I mentioned, sometimes it's the kitchen table and sometimes it's in the living room. But hopefully someday I'll have my own designated space where I can put everything and everything can be right there instead of being like, oh, my sewing box in my room. I have to go get something out of my sewing box or I have to go look for my scissors. Where did I put them? Everything will be right where I want it. <laughs> and hopefully it would be nice if one day, maybe if I owned a long arm quilting machine, but I know how much those cost. So that'll be way, way in the future. <laughs> But that would be pretty sweet, though, to yeah. be able to do all the quilting on those big projects. Uh huh. Share a tip with me about quilting. I think one of my favorite tips that I have learned is chain piecing. I call it assembly line piecing. It's been a real time saving measure for me. Say I have a quilt that has 40 squares in it what I used to do was do like one square at a time you know you sew like say it has four pieces that go together you sew piece one to piece two you cut you get up you iron the seams you square it off then you sew that to piece three but with the chain piecing you get pieces one and two from all 40 squares in your quilt and you do them all at the same time one big long assembly line. You don't even cut the thread in between. Mm -hmm. And you do all that. And then you iron all those seams. And then you take those pieces and you sew piece number three all at the same time. It's like you do it boom, 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 boom. And it really does get your momentum going. You're not having to start and stop, start and stop every couple minutes. You get one big long thing done. And then you do the next step. And then you get your momentum going again with the next pieces. That has been a big time saver for me once I read about that. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is a better way of doing that. So when I can, I do the chain piecing. Yeah, it really helps. It really does, yeah. Well, I appreciate you wanting to ask me questions and get to know a little bit about me. This has yeah. been kind of fun. Well, thank you so much for sharing with me. I so appreciate it. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I'm so glad you joined me for this episode of A Quilter's Life. You can find more stories on aquilterslife.com or subscribe on your favorite podcast player so each episode will be downloaded automatically. If you're enjoying this podcast, would you consider leaving a review as it helps others to find the show? Also, I want to hear about you and your wonderful quilts. Please contact me, Paula Chamberlain, through the website or a Quilter's Life Facebook group to set up an interview. And as always, thanks for listening.